Joe Cox was a fresh face in Westminster, and from the very start, she was a uniting voice. The thing that surprises me time and time again as I travel around the constituency is that we are far more united and have far more in common than that which divides us. But on the 16th of June this year, she was murdered outside a constituency surgery in Burstall, Leeds. 53-year-old Thomas Mayer shot and stabbed the MP. He denied it, but a jury found him guilty and a judge jailed him for the rest of his life. A few weeks ago, Joe was taken from us and our lives collapsed. To the world, Joe was a member of parliament, a campaigner, an activist and many other things. But first and foremost, she was a sister, a daughter, an auntie, a wife, and above all, a mum to two young children who love her with all their being. All their lives, they've been enveloped in her love, excited by her energy and inspired by her example. We try now not to focus on how unlucky we were to have her taken from us, but how lucky we were to have her in our lives for so long. The killing of Joe was a political act, an act of terrorism. But in the history of such acts, it was perhaps the most incompetent and self-defeating. An act driven by hatred, which instead has created an outpouring of love. An act designed to drive communities apart, which has instead pulled them together. An act designed to silence a voice, which instead has allowed millions of others to hear it. Whilst we cannot always choose what happens to us, we can try to choose how we respond. I, for one, will not be beaten by what has happened, and I know I am not alone. It is the last thing my sister would want, and it is not who I am. I will channel my energy into ensuring that Joe's legacy continues, and as a family, we will respond with strength, love, positivity and enthusiasm. The attack was witnessed by passers-by. One dialed 999. Tell on this chaos, he stabs people and shot people. Right, I can see him again. You can see, like you can see him again. Up. He's got a black baseball cap. Now, he's walking up Brown Hill Road. Now, you get a police car at the top of there and at the bottom you'll catch him. Just minutes after, police could be seen pressing a man to the ground and arresting him. Eyewitnesses said until this moment he had been walking calmly. As Jo Cox arrived for her constituency surgery, she was attacked from behind by Mayor. He shot her twice in the head and once in the chest, and in total she was stabbed 15 times. As she lay here on the ground, Mayor was heard to have shouted, Britain first, this is for Britain. Britain will always come first. Originally from Scotland, he'd lived most of his life on this street not far from the murder scene. When police searched his home, they found a stash of far-right white supremacy literature, including a pin featuring the Nazi party emblem and a swastika, alongside another in the shape of a skull and crossbones. He'd also watched this video explaining how to load and fire a sawn-off shotgun. When police looked inside Mayer's bag, they found a similar firearm. He used hunting bullets to kill Joe Cox. The day after the murder, Thomas Mayer refused to answer any of the questions put to him by interviewing detectives. The British public want to know why you've done it. Joe Cox's family want to know why she's dead. You committed an act in a very public place, in a very public manner, which says to us that you want, you want people to know that you've done it. I was just asking you what it is, what is that message, why have you done this? As a family, we will not respond to hatred with hatred. We will love like Joe did and know that although she is dead, the ideas and values that she held so dear will live on. And know that she, although she is not with us, her energy and her love are hardwired into our children for the rest of their lives. Her compassion for others and her stance on refugees and immigration attracted the attention of those with sinister, extreme views. And she paid the ultimate price for that. Nick Martin, Sky News, Burstall.